Welcome back everybody. This is our video solution to problem two from quiz three here in spring 2023 at Cal State Fullerton, Math 302. So in this problem, we have two competing opinions. Alice says that no integer is divisible by zero since you can't divide by zero, right? Which is true, you can't divide by zero. Uh, Bob, on the other hand, says that zero is divisible by zero. Who is correct? Explain. Well, of course, they're going to have different opinions if they're using different definitions. So we have to go back to what is our definition of divisible. So if I have two integers, okay, so if A and B are integers, then B is divisible by A if there exists an integer, let's say it's called M, such that B is equal to M times A. So this is what we mean for an integer to be divisible by another integer. Can you multiply that second integer by another integer and get the one you're claiming is divisible by something? All right, well, Bob says zero is divisible by zero. What would that mean? That'd mean I could replace both the B and the A with zeros. And now I have to find something that I can multiply zero by to get zero. And of course you can use anything you like. So how about we'll use one, all right? Zero is equal to one times zero. This implies that zero is divisible by zero. Okay, so in this case, Bob is the winner. Now, why is it that Alice is mistaken? Well, obviously, because she's not using the same definition, okay? She's saying, oh, for it to be divisible by zero, you would have to uh, uh, be able to divide by zero, all right? And, and why is it that you can't divide by zero, right? Well, it's related to this definition, but let, let's take a look. All right, so Bob said zero is divisible by zero, and we said, oh yeah, well, right, you can write zero equals one times zero. However, somebody else might have said yes, but zero also equals three times zero. And this is where we run into problems, because when we try to write B equals MA, and say, oh, that means that B divided by A equals M, okay? That's, this is what we would like to be able to say, right? B divided by A, all right, or maybe we'll use actual division symbol here, right? So B divided by A equals M. There is an extra assumption, not just that there exists an integer such that this is true, but that there exists a unique integer, okay? So it's not just there exists that we would want in order to write division, we actually want an exists unique M in Z with this property. Okay, namely this right over here. So if we didn't have this uniqueness, we'd be able to say, well, fine, uh, zero divided by zero is equal to one because zero equals one times zero. But we also could write zero divided by zero equals three because, well, zero equals three times zero. And of course, this is nonsense, right? This would tell us that one was equal to three. And, all right, so this is why we need this uniqueness. Now, what if we didn't start with a zero, right? What if we had something like, uh, how about five divided by zero? Okay, well now I would need to be able to say five is equal to something times zero. But of course, something times zero is going to equal zero. And five does not equal zero. This again would be a contradiction. So in this case, the problem isn't that I get multiple solutions, it's that I don't get any solutions at all. So the there exists unique, those work hand in hand. There, there exists, right? There's at least one, but the uniqueness, right? There's at most one. So we need both of those for different instances. When I have a non-zero integer, it's that I don't have the existence. When I'm trying to divide zero by zero, it's that I have too much, I don't have the uniqueness. So in a certain sense, Alex, Alice is definitely correct. You cannot divide by zero and here's why. But when it comes down to what it means to be divisible, there we have a specific definition. And in that case, Bob 
is correct. All right, we'll see you next time.